nutritional ketosis begins at 0.5 millimolar beta-hydroxybutyrate, extends up to about 3 millimolar. Uh, if you exercise, there is something called post-exercise ketosis, or the Cortis Douglas effect, uh, that was at first published by Tim Noakes, actually, um, before he became a, a proponent of carb restriction. And that can take people up to about 4 millimolar. Uh, 4 to 7 millimolar is starvation ketosis, but ketoacidosis doesn't start till you get above 10 millimolar beta-hydroxybutyrate. We get worried in people with type 1 diabetes or, or uh, burned out stage type 2 diabetes if their ketones are getting up in the higher range. So we worry that maybe they're going towards it, but you don't get into acidemia until you get above 10 millimolar. So when you talk about the fed state with 0.1 to 0.2, compare that to 1 to 2 for nutritional ketosis and ketoacidosis starting at 10, there's a tenfold difference between the two. These are distinct metabolic states. They're not blurred. Start, in starvation, your brain lives on ketones because you're not eating any carbohydrate. But with a ketogenic diet, your brain can live on ketones because you're making them and you're not eating carbs. So nutritional ketosis feeds the brain and that allows the person to feel well and functional well in the absence of significant dietary carbohydrate intake. And we thought that was, and, and that was a hard thing to sell. Recently, there's a, a really a revolution in ketones in the less than, in, in, since 2013. And that is that we now understand that they're metabolically signaling molecules um, and uh, that they actually affect our metabolism through epigenetic regulation. Uh, and part of that process is that signaling is it reduces oxidative stress and inflammation. What they demonstrated is that in an animal model, they could infuse ketones, and in a, in, literally in a matter of a few hours, they could affect histone deacetylases, which regulate key genes in our defense against oxidative stress and inflammation. And this is a very early stage of keto adaptation, but it's a prompt response the body has that you act when you cut out carbs and you have ketones come up above 0.5 millimolar in the blood. Uh, it turns on genes. It allows genes to function that you've had since birth but probably got turned off when you got weaned onto carbohydrate-containing foods. Then the, the subsequent paper that um, uh, John Newman and Eric Verdon published it was on uh, ketones as a, another effect of signaling um, other genetic, epigenetic effects that uh, uh, improve insulin action and reduce insulin resistance. So we actually have mechanisms for, for how this might have a direct and beneficial effect on type 2 diabetes.